What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create some advanced muzzle flashes in set of Blackmagic Fusion. Before we get started guys, I should mention that we are going to continue with our Blender visual effects tutorials and breakdowns, so stay tuned for those. However, as we continue to build this channel, we're also going to be branching off into other visual effects programs as well, as there are lots of applications across different softwares. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. The first thing we're going to do is import our media that we're going to be working with and compositing into our shot. So I'm just going to go to File, Import, Media. And I have a folder here for my stock elements as well as our live action shot here. So this is the shot we're going to be working with. So for this advanced muzzle flash, I'm going to import several things. First, I'm going to import our live action footage here. Then I'm also going to import our muzzle flashes. And then I'm going to import a couch hit, which is going to contain some sparks and smoke. And then I'm also going to import a bullet shell here that we're going to composite into our shot as well. So we'll go ahead and select all four of those and open them. And I've set up my frame rate already, so I won't change the frame rate of our project. And now as you can see here, we have our different elements. So we have our live action shot here. Then we're going to add our character shooting. And then we also have our muzzle flashes here. We're going to choose a few of these, probably some of these later elements. And we'll probably just do maybe a burst of three flashes. And then we have our couch hit that I mentioned like so with some smoke. We'll probably add some blur and comp this into our shot a bit and also our ejected shell. Okay, so let's get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is just drag in our SWAT team footage and we can just scroll through our scene here and I think I'm going to cut our footage around here. I'm actually going to just cut our footage as soon as our character right about here. So we'll just have this short part of the clip and then we'll cut it right around there. Now we'll go into edit and you'll see that we have our clip in our timeline. And now that we have it in our timeline, we'll go to our fusion tab with this clip selected and we'll start adding our muzzle flash. So go ahead and select this. And now, as you can see here, we have several different tabs open. Going to, for now, going to close our keyframes tab, which is this guy right here. So I'll go up here and close that. And now you can see we have a right view and a left view, which we can conveniently select what part of our node tree that we're viewing in either of them. But usually what I do is I select what my final composite is here and I select another portion right here. But that kind of, of course, depends on your workflow. All right, so first thing we're going to do for the shot is add the actual muzzle flash itself. Then we're going to add some environmental lighting to help blend it into the shot. Then we're going to add our sparks. And then finally, we're going to add that shell at the end. So I'll take our muzzle flash stock element here and I'll just drag this into our node tree and it'll just be called media n2. We can right click and rename this. We'll call this muzzle flashes. Okay. And now to connect this to our node tree, we'll grab this square output here and just drag this to our media in. Now you can see it automatically will add a merge node to our scene like so. Okay. And we'll also relabel our media in here, which is our live action shot live action plate. Okay. So if you're not familiar with fusion workflow, essentially how this works is you'll usually start with your live action shot. And then this is your data flow from left to right until you get your final composite right here. Essentially, you're just overlaying different elements and adding different effects to them before they're merged on top of our shot right here. So if you don't understand that, this is a great tutorial to get started because it's a fairly basic effect to do. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and scroll through our timeline here and clip our muzzle flash. So you can see on the right window, we've selected our right view option at the end of our composite. And what we want to do is clip our muzzle flashes. So I'll go to keyframes with our muzzle flashes selected. We can find that clip right here and we'll just find the portion of the muzzle flash that we want to use. So I think we're going to just use this side view muzzle flash. So we'll go with this guy right here. So I'll just drag this over and now it will do three bursts and then we'll end our clip right there. And we can just drag our muzzle flashes, just drag our muzzle flashes over here to a point where we want our flash to occur. I think right about here. So let's try that out. Now, obviously we don't want this black background on our muzzle flash, but that's no problem. What we can do here is just select our merge node where our muzzle flash meets our node tree. And then we'll just change the apply mode or blend mode as you might uh, know if you work in After Effects. Uh, we'll just change this to screen. And now as you can see here, that 
black background will disappear. All right, so now let's go ahead and position this muzzle flash over the course of its existence. And there are several ways to do this. You could just do this through a merge node right here, but a lot of the time for node-based workflow, you actually wanna do less on the merge node because you actually have a visual representation here of what's going on. And if you just do something in the merge node where you're overlaying that data onto your live action shot, when you get really large node trees, you can't always find where certain things are being done. So what we'll do instead in this case is we'll just select our muzzle flashes here and then we'll just right click, insert tool, transform, transform. And now it'll automatically add that in our node tree before our muzzle flashes reach our merge node. Now we can select this transform node and transform our muzzle flash accordingly and we'll have a visual representation of what we're doing on our composite. So I'll go ahead and just position our muzzle flash right at the end of our gun here and that's looking pretty good. Coincidentally, it's about the right size. I like to make my muzzle flashes almost the size of the gun itself. That's not always the most realistic aspect, but it tends to look pretty good. So go ahead and just kind of maybe rotate this a little bit, put that right there. And we're actually going to keyframe the position of our muzzle flash because our character does move a little bit. So we want all three flashes to occur over the gun. So I'll go here and add a keyframe for both the pivot and the center keyframes here. And I'll just go over a few frames where our second flash is and make sure that it's correctly placed there accordingly. And you can also change the size of your muscle flash too. So we might just keyframe the size as well. So maybe we'll make this one a little bit bigger to give some variation. And then we'll go back to this guy and make it a bit smaller. And you can see that once I enable the keyframe button there, it's automatically going to add a keyframe if you adjust it in another portion of the timeline. So now if we scroll over here to our final flash, we'll just reposition this accordingly bring down the size a little bit of this last one. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now if we scroll through our timeline, we have a nice muzzle flash. Now we can definitely do some things to make this muzzle flash blend into the shot a bit better. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I want to do is just sort of blur our edges of the muzzle flash a bit better. So we'll do that right before our muzzle flashes reaches our merge node. So I'll select the transform, I'll right click, I'll insert tool, color, color corrector. We'll add that right there. And I'm going to do several things here. First, I'm going to just make it a little bit warmer because I like a warm look. And then I'm also just going to desaturate it a little bit. So maybe just bring down the saturation slightly. You can also maybe lift the gamma a little bit to catch a little bit more of that brightness on there. You can also play around with the gain if you want it to be a little bit brighter. Something like this is pretty nice. And now what we want to do is add some blur to it. So I like to actually add directional blur to my muscle flashes. So it's kind of like the blur is coming from the gun itself. And actually before we do our transform, I actually want the color corrector there instead. So we'll go ahead and pull these guys off. I'll add the transform right before our merge node. And now we'll add the color corrector before our transform. And then we'll add the blur before our color corrector. Because sometimes when you transform an element, you can affect the edges of the uh, blurring effects. So go ahead and try this out. So go ahead and select the muzzle flashes, right click, insert tool, blur, directional blur. Then we'll change the type to zoom. And then we'll just increase the length here a bit. And you can see what that's doing. It's just blurring those edges to make it a little bit more uh, punchy. And now we can change the center of our blur effect to affect the muzzle flash in different ways. So I'm going to put it right at the tip of our gun here. Then you can adjust the length of your flash accordingly. So you can actually make a negative, positive. I'm gonna go positive here. And yeah, now you can see before and after. Now we've added a little bit of blur to our element. We've color corrected it, and I'm pretty happy with this so far. So we have nice muzzle flash, but we're definitely missing one key element which integrates your muzzle flash into the scene, and that is environmental lighting. So what I like to do for my environmental lighting from a muzzle flash is actually use the plate data and brighten that up on specific frames. So to do that, right before our muzzle flash, I'm going to duplicate our live action plate. So I'll go ahead and right click, copy, and then right click, paste. And now we have another duplicate of our live action plate. Now you don't necessarily have to do this. You could just use this data right here, but I just like this workflow. I can just connect this right here, overlay it on top. And now you can see if I select this plate, I'll go ahead and relabel it. We'll call it plate for flashes. So that's like our environmental lighting. Okay, and what we'll do to add our flash on certain frames is we'll right click, insert tool, color, color corrector, and then we'll just increase the gamma and maybe the gain a bit as well. And then we'll also just to mimic the color of the flash, we'll just warm it up a bit, okay? And now we can also keyframe this merge node. 
the uh, blending in here so that only at certain frames our muzzle flash is brightening the environment. So one includes the brightened effect and then zero is back to normal. So we'll go ahead and keyframe this. I'll just kind of find where our muzzle flash starts. So we'll go here, we'll bring our blend to zero on our merge node, add a keyframe. We'll go one frame over and make it one. We'll go one frame over, bring it back down to zero and we'll just keep doing this till our next muzzle flash. Oops. I guess that was the last muscle flash that I just did. So we wanna do the first two now. So I'll just go here to right before the first one, we'll make the blend zero, add a keyframe there, go one frame over, make it one, add another keyframe, one frame over, make it zero. Then right before our next flash, we'll make it zero again. So add a keyframe there, go one frame over, make it one, and one frame over, we'll bring it back down to zero and then we've added this one already. So now we have some somewhat interesting environmental lighting here, uh, but we definitely need to refine it a bit. So go ahead and play through this just to show you guys. So that flash on the environment definitely helps to create a more punchy feel for our effect. But what we want to do is actually mask out the portions of the image that will be affected most by the muzzle flash. So to do that, what we're going to do is mask out the brightening effect that our color correct is doing on our live action plate that we're overlaying onto our composite here. So right by our color corrector, I'll add a new tool. We'll add a mask and you can use a variety of different masks here. I'm going to use the polygon option like so. And then we'll just connect our polygon to the mask input of our color correction node. And now we'll select the polygon. And as you can see here, automatically, if you select this node, you'll be able to create your own mask if you click here. So we're going to create first a mask around our character here to brighten his face up. So go ahead and just draw this here, create a nice little mask around his body, like so. And we're going to feather this mask so it doesn't have to be super precise. So now if we go through our scene, we find one of these flashes, you'll notice that this portion of the image is being brightened only. Now we need to feather the edges of this mask. So we'll select that polygon, then we'll just soften the edges a bit, okay? And one thing I'm noticing here is that our black levels are lifted from this color corrector. So I'll select this color corrector. Then I just wanna adjust the I think the gain could come a little bit down and then we'll just boost the gamma or maybe the contrary. I'll boost the gain, bring down the gamma. Yeah, that's right. So we wanna give a little bit more gain and less gamma. So just adjust accordingly here. So now we have a little bit more of an interesting effect. Okay, now our mask is uh, going a little bit past our character here. So I might just bring down our border width. You can see what happens here if I adjust the setting on our mask. We'll just bring this down a little bit so it doesn't affect quite as much. So just very subtle on our character's face. And now we have a pretty nice looking bit of environmental lighting on him. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now, one thing I want to do is add a little bit more environmental lighting to this wall here. So to do that, we'll actually add another polygon node going into this polygon node. So I'll go ahead and right click here. We'll add a tool. And again, we'll go to mask polygon, add this guy into our first polygon node. And we'll select the second one that we've just added. And we'll create a new mask just around this wall here, like so. And we'll bring up our soft edges, bring down our border width, and now we can adjust accordingly to uh, make sure our environmental lighting is looking pretty clean here. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that our color corrector node is affecting this back wall a little bit more than the, our character's face here. So I'll just select this node and I'll readjust our gain and gamma settings. So just bring this, so I'll just bring that up, bring this down a bit. So that's looking a little bit more realistic. So now we have something like this. Okay. Now you can obviously adjust accordingly depending on your taste, but for some basic environmental lighting, I like this effect. All right, so one more thing we want to do before we are complete with our environmental lighting is keyframe our masks here. So I'll select this first polygon. If we go to our inspector, we can click on the keyframe option to add a mask keyframe. So we'll right click here and we'll set a key for our polygon. Then we'll scroll forward here a bit and I'll just go to our last gunshot and just kind of make sure it stays aligned there. Not much changes, so we shouldn't have to adjust too much, but, um, but you'll notice that the mask is animated over the course of our timeline here. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with our mask on our character here. So we'll select this guy, we'll right click, set key. That's our first flash. Go to our second flash right here, set another key, and we'll just grab all of them. Make sure it's positioned on our character's face like so. And we'll go a little bit more forward, 
add a new key. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so great. Now we have some environmental lighting with these guys right here. So that's helping integrate our muzzle flash into the shot a bit better. But again, you can make that more or less intense depending on your own personal preference. So that's looking pretty good. By the way, guys, just so you know, I'm zooming in and out of my node tree here with the plus and minus button on our keyboard. So that's how you can do that. Now, the next thing we're going to do to integrate our muzzle flash even further into the scene is add some sparks and smoke after the muzzle flash. So I'm going to be using this couch shade here and we'll actually overlay this below our muzzle flash. So we're going to add it right here in the node tree. So we'll grab this couch hit into our node tree and we'll drag it over to our merge two. So it'll automatically add another merge node. And now I'll relabel this, we'll call it sparks slash smoke. Okay, I'm trying to keep everything organized here, even though it's a pretty simple node tree. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and scroll through our timeline. You'll notice that our sparks start at the beginning of our timeline. So we actually need to adjust that in our keyframe tab here. So go ahead and select this, scroll down here to sparks and smoke. And I'll just grab this and we'll scroll over to where our muzzle flash occurs. First one's right here. Just place it right there. Okay, or you could do it after, kind of depends on your taste. One thing I want to do really quick is slowly bring down the opacity of the smoke over time. So I'll go ahead and get rid of our keyframes tab here. I will select our merge node and I'll just go back to where our sparks hit. Okay, so right here, then we can adjust our blend setting on our merge node to slowly have our sparks and smoke fade out. So I'll add a keyframe here and then over the entire timeline, you can see we still got that smoke there. Over the course of this element, we'll just bring our blend to zero. Okay, so now it will actually fade off over time. All right, so let's position our sparks here better. So to do that, we'll select our spark smoke, right click, insert tool. We'll use again our transform node right here. Add this to our node tree right after our sparks. Select that, just kind of position this by our muzzle flare. Just go over a few frames just maybe rotate it a bit. And sparks and smoke are just a great way to integrate your muzzle flash into your scene. I might add a little bit of blur to this just because it's a little bit sharp. So right after our spark smoke, we'll select this, right click, insert tool, blur. We can just try a soft glow maybe. Increase the gain and then increase the glow size. It's kind of interesting. And then just blend it into our shot a bit. It's kind of interesting. Not really blurring anything though, so actually, I would actually keep that in our timeline, but I'm just going to add a standard blur on this as well. So again, insert, blur, just do a normal blur. And then I'll just slowly increase this a tiny bit. Maybe just like, literally just one pixel maybe. So now we have a cool looking set of sparks and smoke on our second muzzle flash there. I am noticing that we don't see the smoke from this element that well. So what we can do is add a color correction node to it to just increase the uh, smoke levels. So right after our soft glow, or maybe right after our actual element here, that might be better. So I'll select our spark smoke, right click, insert, color corrector. And what we can do here is just go to where the smoke is. Then I'll just increase the gain. Now you can see that smoke is showing up a little bit better. Maybe the gamma a bit as well. It's very subtle. Now right, let's take a look. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. You can actually see the smoke in the environment. Might even be a little bit too much glow. I might just get rid of this glow, guys. Just delete that. That's looking better. Maybe it's a little bit too big as well for this size of gun. Okay, uh, now let's give it a shot. Okay, it's not bad. So we have some sparks and smoke on our second hit here. You can play around with different smoke elements and add some more smoke if you like. In this case, I might just duplicate our smoke setup here, like so. So I'll select these guys, right click, copy, then paste it over here. And I'll just add this to a new merge node. And then we'll go to our keyframes and scroll down here to this specific node here. We'll select all of our elements associated with our smoke here. Just move them all over a bit. So let's see here, we want this guy. We have one without sparks, second one with sparks, and the third with no sparks. So maybe we'll just add this smoke to the third one. So we'll add this guy right here. We'll select its transform node right here, or this one right here actually. And then we'll just kind of reposition it where we would like. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And let's take a look. 
It's looking pretty good. It's lingering a little bit too long and it's also a little bit too prevalent. So I'll just go here to our transform node and it'll actually keyframe its movement over time. So we'll go here, we'll add a keyframe on our center and pivot and we'll just go a few frames forward. And then I'll reposition this guy over the tip of our gun. And then I'm also going to go to our merge node here and I'm going to have the smoke fade out just like we did on the last one. So we'll select the merge node and we'll go to where we have plenty of sparks. Right here, that's our last flash. We've got the sparks. We'll click on the keyframe for the blend. Then we'll just, over the course of our next 20 frames or so, about one second, we'll bring down the blend to zero. Okay, it's just not too heavy there. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our composite. We have some sparks. That's looking pretty good. Now, one thing I will say, guys, is the smoke is kind of tracked on the gun here. You know, theoretically, the smoke would move a little bit more. So you could spend some time working on the movement of the smoke. One thing you could do is increase the scale of this element over time. So it just kind of fills the frame a bit like it would in real life. But aside from an actual simulation, really what you have to work with here is just keyframing the movement of the smoke over time to make it look as realistic as you can. So right now, I'm pretty happy with our sparks, our actual muzzle flash, as well as our environmental lighting for this muzzle flash effect. Now what we're going to do as a final touch for this composite is add some shells ejecting from the gun here. So go ahead and below everything before our spark smoke, but after our environmental lighting here, we'll add our eight millimeter shell. So drag this into our composite, just drag this over our node tree. And now you can see we have this shell to work with. Just a pretty basic little 3D render of a shell, nothing too crazy. So go ahead and relabel this guy. We'll call it shell one. We'll go into our keyframes and we'll find when our first muzzle flash occurs right around here. And we'll select our shell here and drag it over so that it starts right when our muzzle flash happens, okay? And now we'll keyframe the movement of our shell. So as you might guess, we'll uh, select our shell, right click, add a new transform node right here. And we'll just position this on the gun at first. So scale it down. Now subtle is key, guys. I would try to keep it as subtle as possible. You don't want the effects to stand out. You just want to be paying attention to those small details that often can sell an effect. So we'll transform our shell here. I'll add some keyframes on the center, the pivot, and the size. Now we'll go forward a few frames. So I'll click off our transform node. We'll go forward maybe, I think three frames would be good. And we'll select that transform node again, and we'll just, you know, push this off to the side here as if it's ejected from our gun. So now, if we look closely here, we can see that shell ejecting. Now, obviously, we need something to sell this effect a bit better. It is clear as day, you know, on this frame right here, you can see that, uh, you know, it's not blending into our shot very well. And one of the key reasons for that is, as you might guess, lack of motion blur. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of directional blur like we've done to some previous elements. So I'll bring our transform node here, select our shell node, and we'll go insert tool, blur, directional blur, add this right here. We'll use our linear option this time, and we'll just increase the length. I'm gonna just increase it all the way, and then maybe add a little bit of glow to it, if you want, just to make it a little bit more obvious. We can also change the angle here. So I think we want the angle, you know, something like this. And yeah, I wanna increase the length more, so I can just do that manually, maybe 0.3, and increase the glow to make it more obvious change the angle accordingly. I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look at this, play through our scene. So now we have a little ejected shell. Now it's a little big, we'll say. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So I'll actually just bring down the size here. I'll actually get rid of the keyframes on the size. Let's take a look. I actually ended up doing the ejection for the second flash, it looks like. So we have the sky like so, but that's okay. You can also play around with the type of blur here. We add a little bit of glow to it, and maybe just a little bit of standard blur to it as well, so it's not so sharp. So we just add another blur note here. Just slowly increase this guy. Not too much, just subtle. Subtle is the name of the game, looking good. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. It's only gonna be a few frames in the shot. So now all we need to do is duplicate our shell so that we have it for the other two flashes in our scene. So I'll just grab this guy here. Right click, copy, and paste it right here. And 
we'll drag this guy to our merge node. Really all we need to do here is double check our transform, our animation, and adjust the keyframes. So we'll select this here, scroll down. This second one is going to be called shell one one. So it's this guy right here. We'll select all the related nodes here, like so. And we'll actually make this the first one because we just haven't added that yet. So we'll go over to our first flash right here. Just drag this over accordingly. Now let's just reposition our keyframes for our shell. So select this guy, put it by the ejection port, scale it down a bit, go over a few frames. Now probably one thing that you could do to make this look even better is just change the trajectory of this a bit as well, just to give our shells a little bit of variation. So this is looking pretty good. Then finally we want to add our last ejection so we'll add it here. Again, we'll, we'll copy our node tree over here, paste it in, add it to our node tree, and then we'll adjust our keyframes. So this one's called shell 111. Again, you can relabel these, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is. We'll select all of our related nodes here. And we'll just drag this over like so. And once again, we'll adjust our transform keyframes, bring down the size a bit so it's not too obvious. I just change our trajectory one more time so it goes more up and out. Let's check out what hopefully will be our final result here. Right, pretty good guys pretty nice little effect there now one more thing you could do if you really want to sell the realism and you don't think this is enough is you could animate a little gas blowback on the actual weapon here so maybe I'll cover that in a future video but I found that most of the time when creating muzzle flashes for uh, various films and such if you add the muzzle flash the sparks and smoke along with the environmental interaction and a shell coming out of the chamber you get a pretty awesome looking result so go ahead and just go through this node tree one more time with you guys so we're starting off with our live action plate then we've added our environmental interaction with various masks to isolate to where we want that environmental interaction then we have here our first shell that's coming out of the gun after the first muzzle flash along with some motion blur and blur then we have two more shells here that are ejected as our last two shots are fired Finally, we have some sparks and smoke added here behind our muzzle flash, and then we have two elements of sparks and smoke added to our muzzle flash, and then finally, we've added the muzzle flash elements along with some directional blur and color correction and their various animations to follow the gun as well. And then finally, we're giving all this to our final output right here. Anyways guys, that is how you can create some fairly advanced muzzle flashes inside of Black Magic Fusion. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.